Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. The comedian and actress Monique sat down on Shannon Sharp's messy show, Club Shay Shay, <laughs> and she aired out her grievances with everybody, including D.L. Hughley. He pretty much said that her children don't F with her, and in my mind, I think he was trying to call her a deadbeat mama. Also, he said nobody loves her for real. Not only that, he talked about how she got evicted. I mean, it was just messy. Now, before I get into this video, I first wanna thank Raycon for sponsoring this video. No matter how you're feeling about Valentine's Day this year, I think we can all agree that some things are better together. Peanut butter and jelly, a good movie and popcorn, and you know what else? Music and podcasts, and my Raycon Everyday Earbuds. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they'll stay in your ears whether you're exercising or just dancing to your favorite tunes. And most importantly, Raycon Everyday Earbuds give you absolutely amazing audio quality at half the price of other premium audio brands. And these earbuds are used to the feeling of love. They've already gotten tens of thousands of five-star reviews. I use my earbuds almost every day, guys, especially when I'm exercising, which is also when I like to catch up on all my favorite shows and podcasts. I know you'll fall in love with your perfect pair of Raycon earbuds too. Right now, click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash impressive to get 15% off your Raycon purchase plus free shipping. Now back to the video, I am gonna talk about Monique and D.L. Hughley's back and forth because it was pretty messy. But before I do, I kind of wanna talk a little bit about Monique's interview on Club Shay Shay because she called out several heavyweights in Hollywood and two of the heavyweights that she called out was Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. And we all know Monique's issue with Oprah and Tyler. If you don't know the backstory, it all stems from her role in the movie Precious. Now, back in the day, Monique actually starred in Precious and she was only paid $50,000 for her role, but she did it as a favor to the director, Lee Daniels, because she was friends with Lee Daniels. And also the movie was an independent project, so she didn't really expect to get paid much. However, the movie ended up blowing up once Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry started funding the film. And Monique stuck to her obligations. She promoted the film in the US because she had a contract with Lee Daniels. So she did fulfill her contractual obligations. However, Oprah and Tyler were trying to get her to do even more work by promoting the film overseas, but Monique was not contractually obligated to do that. So she actually turned them down. She couldn't extend herself any more than she already did because at this point she had her own talk show, she had a comedy tour, and on top of that she had two young boys that she was raising. So she had to take time off to spend with her family, but Oprah and Tyler were trying to get her to work. And she's like, listen, if I'm gonna go overseas to promote this film that I'm not contractually obligated to do, I would like to at least be paid for it. So she and her husband were asking Tyler and Oprah to pay her to promote the film overseas. And they were like, no. And according to Monique, they basically wrote her off as being difficult to work with and they pretty much blackballed her, allegedly. Even Lee Daniels played a part in blackballing Monique. And this was her friend. And Monique called them out years ago during her comedy set, which set the internet on fire. Now Monique's issues with Oprah go very deep because in the height of Monique's career, I think right after she won the Oscar for her role in Precious, Oprah decided to invite Monique's dysfunctional family on her show. She invited her brother on the show knowing that this brother violated Monique when she was younger. And she also invited Monique's parents without telling her. And she knew that Monique had an issue with her mother, but she didn't care about that. She cared more about ratings and exploiting Monique's family. When Oprah Winfrey called me up and she said, I got a call from your brother. And this is after I won the Oscar award, mm -hmm. right? And your brother wants to come on the show and he wants to apologize to you for molesting you. I said, Oprah, I said, I don't want anything to do with that cat. I said, but, and then she said, well, if you want me to scratch the show, I will scratch it. I said, sis, don't scratch it because he could be a different person. I just don't want no parts of it. Right. I start seeing commercials with my mother and my father and my other brother who used to be my manager, mm -hmm. who knew the fear that I had with the brother that was up on stage, right? right? Mm -hmm. 
We never talked about my mother being there. Had Oprah Winfrey said, I'm going to have your mama, I'd have said, shut that shit Graphic. down. I don't need nobody seeing my mama be greedy. I don't need the world see it. Shut it down. See, Shannon, Oprah and I had a private conversation about our mothers. I shared with that woman what me and my mother were going through. Feel and I mom. shared that with you. And I shared with her, my family, and what the dynamic was. But you don't tell me you can already have my mother and my father on your show. And you think that that's just okay? Now, this right here was the ultimate betrayal for Monique. I mean, I don't understand why Oprah thought it would be a good idea to invite Monique's dysfunctional family on the show and kind of embarrass her and bring up her trauma to the masses. I don't understand why she would agree to do that. Monique even feels like Oprah was jealous of her at one point because Oprah tried to take Monique's roles, allegedly. The movie, The Butler, mm -hmm. that movie was offered to me. Lee Daniels came out and said, I did offer Monique the butler. But as he said to me, he said, Mo, at the time I didn't have no power and I didn't have no money. So when Oprah said she wanted it, so who played the lead role in the butler? Oprah Winfrey. Lee Daniels was getting ready to do a biopic on Richard Pryor and he offered me the grandmother. Who then calls Lee Daniels and says, I want to be the grandmother. Right. So when Lee says, hey baby, she got the money, Go get it. get it. But someone would just say, how is that working out like that? How is that happening like that? How is it that things that was offered to Monique, you seem to be playing? Now, I, I told Oprah about that. So according to Monique, Oprah has done some very shady things to her. And Monique did express that she feels like Oprah is using some of those same shady tactics towards Taraji P. Henson. During the Color Purple press run, Taraji cried about being underpaid and also she opened up about the poor working conditions on set. And a lot of people did point fingers at Oprah and Monique is like, well, Oprah must have had a part to play in it. When I saw Taraji mm -hmm. broken mm -hmm. on those platforms, it was painful to watch. We act like our eyes didn't see what it saw when we watched that promotion happen mm -hmm. with the color purple. Right. We wanted to act like we didn't see how Oprah Winfrey treated Taraji. In my humble opinion, when you saw her walk up, you saw that there was tension. You saw that there was something happening. Right. And then when you see Taraji write her a love letter, it's like, listen, we got to stand tall and stand strong on what we know. You, We know you were mistreated. We know it wasn't right. We know it was unfair. And then you turn around and say, oh, but Lady O handled it. I have a problem with that. Monique also went in on Tyler Perry. Now, Monique's issue with Tyler also stems from the whole precious debacle. Monique feels like Tyler Perry played a part in getting her blackballed because he mentioned that she was difficult to work with. And it's all because she didn't promote the film Precious overseas. Tyler even had a conversation with the playwright and director, David E. Talbert, and he said the experience was difficult. And he admitted this over the phone call that he had with Monique and her husband. And the audio is muffled, but in the phone call, you could hear Tyler saying that David said that Monique was great to work with. However, Tyler told him that Monique was difficult. y'all to understand what you just heard i had something for her should i give it to her i don't know because lionsgate is gonna have a fit why would lionsgate be having a fit about tyler perry bringing anything to him for me because i've had no business with lionsgate 
Well, it's clear that Tyler told the Lionsgate studio heads that Monique wouldn't promote the film. And I can imagine the studio heads were pissed because, you know, Oprah and Tyler got funding from them to financially back the film. So Lionsgate had interest in how the film performed overseas. They probably could have gotten more money for the film if Monique promoted it at the Cannes Festival and in Europe and places like that. So I think that was a missed opportunity and that's probably why Lionsgate was mad at Monique and Tyler of course didn't want to work with her after that either. Now Monique did mention that several people in the industry tried to help her and Tyler settle out their differences but eventually they ended up backing away from Monique and taking Tyler's side. There were people that reached out to Tyler Perry on my behalf okay. and I was grateful for that. Okay. There was Al Sharpton, the Reverend Al Sharpton, civil rights leader. Yeah. I sent him that audio. He listened to it. He said, baby, what that man did to you was wrong and you're like my daughter and we're gonna have to get him to fix that. Right. We didn't hear from Al Sharpton for six months. The next time we saw Al Sharpton, he was on a podium talking about, we don't need to fly a commercial because we can fly Tyler Perry's private jet. I said, that's why maybe I'm not hearing back from him. Okay. Then we had our beautiful sister, Stephanie Mills. Yes. Okay, who is, she don't play, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I told her what happened, sent her the audio. Now, I don't know if she listened to that audio or not, but however, she called Tyler Perry. She said, Monique, Tyler Perry does not want to revisit this. Okay, fine. Right. While we're on the phone, Tyler Perry calls her back and says, I will meet with Monique, but not with her husband. Are you ready for this? Yeah. And then Monique has to apologize publicly to say Oprah and I had nothing to do with messing up her career. So I said, Stephanie, Tell Tyler Perry, never will I meet with him without my husband. And I owe no apology, so I'm not going to give one. That goes away. What, what, what could I possibly owe you an apology for when you've admitted? See, when Lee Daniel says to me, because Cookie from the, the show Empire, yeah. I was offered that role. Then for Lee to call me back and say, baby girl, they said you're too difficult to work with. But you hear on the audio that a man told David Talbert I was difficult to work with. Do you see how that right. cost? My family? Yes. And with no accountability? Because, oh, it's the great Tyler Perry? No, you've got to be accountable for that. And he cost my family millions. And you want so to be compensated? You, yes. Especially when you've admitted that you've lied. Okay. Especially when you've admitted that you started a rumor. Yes. Now, Monique also called out Kevin Hart. Child, Monique was calling out everybody. She said Kevin also tried to help her and Tyler make amends, but they didn't reach any resolve. So Kevin was like, well, Monique, I'll work with you. However, Kevin distanced himself from her. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So when my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce, I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol and we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called Endemol immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us, he's going to partner, executive produce. Two weeks go by. Endemol says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any, any kind of relationship with Monique. I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol. And they said, Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's, that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you okay, though, with this white man calling them up? Getting in between our relationship after something you said. He said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication. And we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. So Kevin pretty much ghosted Monique. <laughs> and when I hear Monique talk, I can understand why there is a lot of frustration with the industry because a lot of people, people that she's looked up to, people in higher up positions have kind of turned their backs on her. And she deserves an apology from a lot of these people. She was blackballed. She lost out on a lot of money. She definitely deserves an apology. So I'm not mad at her for telling her truth, but I'm not gonna say that Monique is 100% innocent in every situation. I do think Monique's directness and maybe the way she goes about things and the way that her husband goes about things can turn some people off. I don't think she has the best conflict resolution skills, even though I think it's good that she confronts the problem immediately instead of talking behind people's backs. She puts it out there and lets them know what her issue is. And that's a good thing, but also 
she has to have a level of political correctness when she's addressing some of these people, especially some of these people in higher positions, because they do have egos and they're not going to readily accept critiques if it's being done in a blunt way. They're not going to readily accept being confronted all the time. So Monique would have to probably address problems differently if she wants to continue on in Hollywood because people are not going to want to work with her if they feel like she's going to call them out and expose them every single time. She also called out the producer, Will Packer. <laughs> She worked on this movie called Almost Christmas, which was directed by David E. Talbert and produced by Will Packer. And Monique exposed Will's behavior behind the scenes. While we're on that set of Almost Christmas, there were a few things that was happening that I took issue with. Will Packer is a producer. He came on that set and tried to give us a direction while the director was standing right there. I said, Will Packer, I will not allow you to do that. You would never do that to Steven Spielberg. You would never do that to a white director. Now, I had a meeting in David Talbert's trailer with Will Packer, David Talbert, and the first AD because they were being disrespectful to this black man. Mm. And I was not going to allow that to happen. So, Will Packer and I are now at odds because I'm seeing how this brother's acting. I'm in my trailer. Will Packer's friend, or I'm not sure what title to give her. This young lady who we're all old enough to be her mother. Mm -hmm. She comes and looks at my assistant and said, what's your shoes doing off? I said, excuse me, you're out of order. You don't come in here questioning nobody in my trailer. As a matter of fact, and her energy was not that of, I'm playing. It was, what you, I said, as a matter of fact, I need you to go get Will. When Will Packer comes into that trailer for us to talk, do you know what that man says to me and my hairstylist and my makeup artist and my assistant? I am the head nigga in charge. Everything stops with me. I said, well, I want to let you know this, Will. You're going to hear that you're the head nigga in charge from me as many times as I can tell people that's what you said. So he tried to laugh it and joke it. I said, uh-uh, I don't play that way, brother. I said, the food is bad. Like, what we doing here? The food was slop. So when they say they didn't have any food, mm -hmm. the food we had, nobody ever ate that food because it was just like you can feed them anything. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where it gets even better. Remember how Taraji said the trailers were infested? Yes. Our trailers blew up. And if any of us were in those trailers, we would have been gone. Right. The trailers blew up. They said, Mo, we let him know, talking about the head in charge, we let him know. He just said, okay, and walked away. <coughs> I said, he what? He just said, okay, and walked away. Nobody asked, not the studio, not Will Packer, not nobody wow. said, are you good? Did you lose anything? Right. The only thing they wanted to know from me was, where was Aunt May's wigs? That right there is wild that is wild that's wild now monique also came for tiffany haddish now tiffany dissed monique first she dissed her husband during her gq magazine interview she said this in response to monique speaking on the pay gap at netflix she said my business run different than her business i don't live her life i don't have that husband of hers I'm looking at how Netflix has opened up so many opportunities for black females in comedy. When my people are dying, that's when you're going to catch me protesting. I'm not going to protest because somebody got offered not the amount of money they wanted to get offered. If you don't like what they're offering you, just no longer do business with them. Now, this is what Monique said in response to Tiffany's interview. Listen to this. I remember our beautiful sister Tiffany Haddish mm -hmm. did an interview with GQ magazine and the conversation turned to Monique. And she said, well, I don't do business like Monique do business. And I'm glad I don't have that husband of hers. And when I saw that, it's like, Tiffany, if you had a husband like mine, you may not have two DUIs. Mm. If you had a husband like mine, you may not be caught up in what looks like you could have been grooming a child. Mm -hmm. And I say all of that with no judgment. If you had one like mine, you may not sit in these positions that you can't explain the next day. Right. Whew, that was kind of shady, but did she lie? Did she lie though? <laughs> now, I want to get into this whole mess with Monique and D.L. Hughley because this is pretty messy and I do remember covering it. And I will say I initially was on Monique's side because I felt like Monique was blindsided. So I'll tell you what happened. Monique and D.L. did a comedy show together. In fact, they did two comedy shows and According to Monique, she signed a contract where she was supposed to close out the show. So she was the headliner. 
She headlined the previous show that she did with D.L. Hughley, and she was going to headline the next one. However, there was a bit of drama behind the scenes because D.L. Hughley was set to close the show. He had his own contract that he signed, and Monique had her own contract that she signed. So it seems to me like there was some miscommunication there. There was some miscommunication with the legal team and the promoters. So it just ended up being a big mess. And Monique went on stage and she blasted D.L. Hughley. And this is why I say Monique has an issue with conflict resolution because instead of handling this a different way, she decided to go on stage and rant and she dragged him. Now, D.L. Hughley didn't necessarily handle the situation any better because he was going back and forth with Monique. So they were taking shots at one another and Monique took it lower when he brought up D.L. Hughley's daughter. Now, D.L. admitted on Sway in the Morning that his daughter got violated by his friend and he didn't believe his daughter, which is very messed up. He took his friend's side over his daughter. Because my youngest daughter said something happened to her and because it was somebody I like, I didn't believe her. Mm. And I, I'll never get that back. She'll mm -hmm. never, I'm supposed to protect her. And I'll never get that back that she got, she told her father something and he didn't do nothing about it. And Monique brought that up in the conversation to use it as an attack on DL's character. And I think it was really messed up because the daughter didn't have nothing to do with this and her trauma shouldn't be weaponized in that way. So I do think Monique was wrong for that, but DL didn't handle the situation any better himself. So I think they both handled it wrong. Monique brought up her issues with DL on Club Shay Shay and DL had a lot to say in response to it. They went back and forth yet again and it was just a mess, y'all. And there's a brother named D.L. Hughley. Yeah. And until he take accountability, I won't let it go. I do D.L.'s uh, radio show. Yes. D.L. Hughley is not there. They said, Monique, we want to play a game of would you rather. Let's go. Would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom or Corinne Steffens without one? That is exactly what happened. Now, I said to the team, how does that uplift our community? I said, sister, and her name is Jasmine, how could you ask another sister that? I call D.L. Hughley on the phone. I say, hey, baby, yeah. Hey, D.L., yeah. I said, listen, I just got off the phone with your team, and they wanted to play this game, Would You Rather? And it was like, stupid. Like, asking me about my husband and Lee Daniels and Corinne Steffens, and his exact words, well, that's how we do it. I said, DL, how does that uplift our community? And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? Like I said, that's just how we do it. So it is what it is. Now, it got so ugly that my attorney had to send a cease and desist. So it never aired. You babies that are really good with this internet, through the years, I've watched DL speak ill of me. Through the years, I was bitter. I was dangerous with what I was doing, saying that it was inequality. My husband didn't know what he was doing. This went on through the years. I was unloved, all of these things. And I said to myself, I'ma see you. I'ma see you. Now we have a show in Detroit. Contractually, I was the headliner. I was contractually signed to go as the headliner. Right, you mean you go last. D.O. Hughley didn't come into the building until 9.30. Now, contractually, I said I have to be on stage by 9.30 because if the show starts at 8, I refuse to keep an audience waiting. Right. That is disrespectful to the Correct. audience. When I went out on that stage, Shannon, I made sure everything I said, he heard me. So Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy video with her and her daddy complaining about something or working out. I don't know nobody that work out that much in gain weight unless every crunch you do has got capped in the front of it. But apparently she goes on Club Shay Shay and tells the story about how she came on my radio show and I wasn't there at the time. She apparently was so offended by that that she says she got off, she called me. Monique did, and she said I was very dismissive, like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints, I listened to her, and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't because I respected her wishes. She's a liar. Then she encouraged everybody, uh, allegedly it stems from the fact that I used to always talk shit about her on video after video. And you know what you're not going to find? You're not going to find any evidence of that because Monique is a fucking liar. She's lying about that. But what you will find is Monique talking shit about some uh, uh, alleged contract dispute we had. Look at the ticket. It says D.L. Hughley, then Monique. She knows the story. But what she did in response to that, she talked about my dog, my wife, 
This broad even bought out my daughter's personal trauma. My daughter was molested and Monique bought that shit and, and told the world that I allowed my daughter to be raped in front of me. The lying motherfucker. She knows she was lying. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't fuck with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real? Except your daddy, who you apparently have to pay. When I watched DL say, she went after my wife. She went after my daughters. I want to really be clear who I went after. So that there's no confusion here. When I was on that stage and I said, it must be hard to perform oral sex. But differently. Okay. On a coward. That had nothing to do with Mrs. Hughley. That insult was directed straight to you, DL. That had nothing to do with your wife. That was straight to you. So it felt like you were trying to pass it off as if I was going after your wife. When it comes to your daughter, to the baby that you did a post about, you did an interview about, I didn't do that interview. I simply reposted what you said. So when you say, Monique, you went after my daughter, that's untrue, DL. I posted what you said. And then when you said on, on your when you were really going for it with your shades on, and you said, Monique said, I stood by and watched my daughter be raped. D.L. Hughley, that's your conscience talking to you, brother. I never said that. I never said that. And I want to be a little clear about something else. Never would I try to do anything to harm any of your babies, because we got babies too. So never would I try to do anything to harm your children. However, what I was saying to your daughter and to the other daughters out there, I know what it's like for your daddy to know you've been touched and he not protect you because my daddy did the same thing. That, that's what that whole point was. But I, I was showing why I would call you a coward, brother. I don't think it's brave that you didn't protect your baby. So when I said what I was saying, let me be clear to you, D.L. Hughley, it had nothing to do in reference to your family. And you know that. My biggest mistake is saying yes to you. I should have said no when you came on my, you couldn't come on my radio show. I should have said no that I wasn't playing those dates with you. As a matter of fact, I would, almost anybody who says yes to you at some point is, is, is in this mail you with you. Almost anybody. So I would suggest anybody out there, you can say yes to drugs, but say no to Monique. You talked about how um, you, my children, families are off limits. They weren't when you were running across Vegas. I mean, on the stage in Detroit. They weren't when you were talking shit on social media. When you got your ass whip and your tickets dropped, then they became off limits. But let's do this. Let's decide that you will treat my children like you treat yours, like you don't know them, invisible, like you have no relationship with them, like you're estranged, you're, like you're unfamiliar, like you don't know them. You said... Your first son, what's your relationship like? We're still very much separated. You also intimated that I was a coward. You know what I'd never do? I would never let my woman take care of me. I would never let my woman get evicted from her apartment. I would never let my woman has to ask another man for money. I'd never do that. Can your old man say the same? He loves you. Of course, he got to say that. You claim him on your taxes. He's a dependent. He's sitting there with you right now, uh-huh and everything, because it ain't like he does anything else. But you never address the salient point. I said that if you spent as much time writing your Netflix special as you did arguing about getting it, it wouldn't have been trash. It was. I didn't say it. I defy anybody out there. Stop listening to me. Watch it. Read the reviews. Read the reviews. You begged for something. You made valid points that women are underpaid. That they're not valued. That's absolutely right. So you would think that when you got a chance to do something that you would argue for, you'd be up for the challenge, but you shit the bed because you never are ready for it because all you ever do is complain about what you don't have. You're never ready for the moment because you're always living in the past. You, if you spend half of your time doing as opposed to talking about who didn't do for you and what they did for you, you'd be a lot further along. You wouldn't be evicted. You wouldn't be working for your man. You wouldn't be asking other comics for money. So you got all the ingredients. Take that piece of paper that you're running down the list with and that pen that you got and that daddy sits next to you, daddy sitting next to you and do what you can't do, do what you never do. Write a fucking joke. Who child. So I tried to condense that back and forth as much as possible. 
Now, I saw Tiffany Haddish comment under D.L. Hughley's post and she was applauding him. So she's obviously siding with him against Monique because Monique took a shot at her. But honestly, I think the whole back and forth was just messy. There were some points made on both Monique and D.L. Hughley's side, but also there were some unnecessary things brought up. DL didn't need to fat shame Monique. He didn't need to put it out there that she got evicted. We didn't need to know that she borrowed money from a comedian. Well, she did say that Kevin Hart did give her some money and she paid him back with interest. So she didn't necessarily owe him anything, but either way, it wasn't necessary for him to bring up just like it wasn't necessary for Monique to bring up his daughter and use that as a way to attack DL. That wasn't necessary. DL was dead wrong for not standing behind his daughter and it definitely shifts the way I see him, but his daughter's trauma has nothing to do with his issue with Monique and it should have never been brought up. Monique was wrong for that. And this is why DL is now coming for her family because she opened up a door for that. This is why he's taking shots at her husband. This is why he's even taking shots at her mothering skills because Monique and her older son are not close. And it's because she wasn't really present for him. She was really chasing after her career. So she was vulnerable enough to reveal that during that Club Shay Shay interview. But now people are going to use that against her. The way she used D.L. Hughley's daughter situation against him. It's all messy and I don't condone it. I do think that there are some areas where both of them need to take accountability. And like I said, I don't feel like Monique is the victim in every situation. But there are people in the industry who have done her wrong. And I do think she deserves an apology. That's all she really wants. Lee Daniels apologized and she accepted it. Charlemagne the God apologized for disrespecting her on The Breakfast Club and she accepted it. And she just wants an apology from the other people who wronged her. That's it, that's all. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.